you ever wonder what the trends for 2021 are gonna be? Well, I do, but you know what? I focus on cybersecurity. I'm gonna tell you about the top five trends I'm looking at for 2021, coming up now. Hello everybody, my name is Adam Gordon. I'm entertaining here at IT Pro TV, and I'm coming at you today with the top five global cybersecurity trends for 2021 that myself, people like me in our industry, are thinking a lot about to help you better understand security and be prepared. My number one is cloud, and more specifically, cloud threats. Now you may say, well, Adam, this is all about cybersecurity trends, not cybersecurity threats. Why are we talking about cloud threats? Well, the reality is cloud computing has been around for some time. According to IDC, the global cloud services market is actually projected to reach over one trillion, that's trillion with a T, one trillion dollars in the next few years as of 2024. So it's been something we've been focused on for some time in terms of the growth of cloud. But the growth of cloud is actually not only a trend, it's also potentially a concerning area we really have to pay attention to because rapid cloud migration is actually bringing on a whole host of new security threats as well as challenges and opportunities for us. We see things like cloud-based security threats that are emerging based around things such as misconfigured cloud storage. So where we're putting all that data that we're creating and moving into the cloud is great because we have access to it 24 seven, it's scalable, we can use it on demand, anybody can be given access to it as long as we have the right kind of access control in place. But if we misconfigure that cloud storage, well, bad people get to see our data and that's never a good thing. Reduced visibility and control, we're essentially outsourcing management of more and more of our traditional on-premises infrastructure to cloud service providers. Think the Microsofts, the Amazons, the Googles of the world. Not that they're doing a bad job, quite the opposite. They're doing a great job, but the problem is they're doing that great job for hundreds, thousands, and now millions of customers globally at scale every day. The more and more people that onboard onto these platforms, potentially the more issues and concerns we have as we give away the ability to directly manage and oversee our infrastructure and our data, we reduce our visibility and therefore by extension, our control over those systems. And again, if we're not careful about configuration, access control and threat management, we run the risk potentially of increasing the likelihood of a data breach or some sort of a negative outcome and consequence that let's be honest, we'd rather not have. We also wanna think about the fact that when our data lives in the cloud, we have to worry about it not just being there all the time, but what happens when we no longer wanna be in that cloud? We wanna to go to a different cloud. And as a result, we wanna move our data as well as all of our infrastructure from one platform to another. Well, cloud migration is not a new thing, it happens all the time, but our data may or may not be completely deleted, removed and disposed of securely when we leave a cloud vendor's platform. An incomplete data deletion is also a very concerning trend as well as the meteoric growth we're experiencing with regards to cloud services overall. So we really have to pay attention to the details when we're thinking about cloud. And finally, with regards to cloud as a security trend for 2021, we wanna focus on cloud applications, our ability to service our users, our customers on demand and provide data provide access to services through cloud apps is just amazing. It is what's driving this meteoric growth in cloud services. Remember, close to an over 1 trillion in overall booked business and revenue by 2024. That's a big number. But those cloud apps are not always as secure as they should or could be. And vulnerable cloud apps are also part of the overall security trend that we have to be paying attention to really do our best to make sure we bake security in and we securely design and secure those apps at every stage of our development lifecycle to ensure beyond any reasonable doubt that our users are gonna be secure while using them and our data is gonna be secure while flowing through them. All right, so number two, AI, artificial intelligence integration. Everybody hears the word AI. And they get a little spooky and freaked out by the fact that robots are coming to take over the world and machines are gonna enslave all of us. Well, that may or may not happen, but the reality is it's not happening in 2021. 
What is happening is that AI, artificial intelligence, and the merging of that with cybersecurity is continuing to drive huge growth in our sector, and it's continuing to provide huge additional benefits to us from an information management and IT security perspective. Uh, according to the latest numbers, we see projected growth in AI in the cybersecurity realm growing from approximately just around $9 billion annually in 2019 to just over $38 billion over the next few years by 2026. Analyzing risk data from structured as well as unstructured resources is one of the key things that AI integration provides the ability for us to do. Let's be honest. We as humans are really good at managing very small amounts of information over very small amounts of time to do very structured specific things. We're not really good at managing huge volumes of information over long periods of time to understand trends. We're just not wired to do that. But computers using artificial intelligence and machine learning, as well as business intelligence capabilities like data visualization, are perfectly suited to do this. And AI is able to provide threat intelligence, really allowing us to see the patterns in emerging data flows and activity on our networks that we as individual humans are just not capable of perceiving. And to do so by reducing the time to make critical decisions and allowing our security teams to respond in almost near real time to remediate those threats. Number three, extended detection and response, what we call XDR, not to be confused with EDR, which is enhanced detection and response, kind of an earlier generation of our thought process, enhanced and or endpoint detection and response. You hear it referred to either ways, but this is kind of a next generation thought process when we talk about XDR, collecting and or correlating data that enables visibility and context into advanced threats that are streaming through our systems and happening all around us is what the name of the game is. When we talk about XDR, threats can be analyzed, prioritized, hunted, and remediated, allowing us to hopefully prevent proactively security breaches before they occur, but at a minimum, if we can't get to them before they occur, react to them in near real time, trying to prevent them from getting out of hand and causing the kinds of global data breaches that companies are wrestling with every day. So when we think about XDR, we think about proactive protection, providing unified visibility across multiple stacks of infrastructure and across multiple attack vectors. This is cutting edge technology that allows us to peer into the vortex, look over the realm into the black hole and see all the bad actors staring back at us and selectively target them to try to prevent them from hurting us. Number four, data privacy and what we call third party and or supply chain risk management. That cool acronym, SCRM, one you're gonna hear a lot about and really is something that you're gonna to have to be focused on. When we think about data privacy and supply chain risk management or third party and vendor risk management, I think of them as a trend in for security in 2020 It's becoming more focused, formalized, and actually disciplines in their own right. These are two distinctly different set of activities, but they are merging together because the impact of data management and data privacy across all aspects of an organization is becoming amplified more and more due to regulatory compliance issues across multiple different levels at the local, regional, federal, and even international landscape levels. We see more compliance regulation taking place, more interest in understanding, identifying, and managing PII, personally identifiable information, and PHI, protected health information, among two main categories of data. As a result of this, we have a need not only to be compliant, but we have a need to ensure downstream compliance, compliance of our supply chains and those extended supply chains that our direct first line vendors are relying on to supply us. If we don't have knowledge and visibility into those activities of those providers, there's no way we, as the primary owner and manager of customer data, can be expected to secure that data successfully and enhance and therefore reach compliance. The problem is we give access to our systems where our data that we have to secure is to other external actors. And without allowing them and asking them and indeed coercing and forcing them in some cases to behave appropriately, 
line up with our expectations of regulation and compliance, line up with our policies and our activities to ensure that they will not transfer risk into our organization, we are unfortunately not ex exercising due diligence and not acting with due care. This is gonna be a big one, and this is gonna be one you definitely wanna watch out for in the coming years. This is a fun one because it's really exciting to say, and yes, we really do pronounce it sassy, Secure Access Service Edge, what we call SASE. This is the idea of taking our WAN, our wide area network, and converging it, merging it with network security services like our CASBs, our cloud access security brokers that do access control for us from hybrid environments into and out of our cloud infrastructure. FWAAS, what we call FWAS, or Firewall as a Service. And of course, what conversation about SASE would be complete without zero trust and zero trust architectures. We merge all of that into a single cloud delivered service model. This is all about bringing security right to the edge of our cloud infrastructure and our service provisioning and making remote access and cloud-based services as tightly controlled and secure as they can be. According to Gartner, 40% of businesses are looking to adopt or implement SASE by 2024. That means that meteoric growth in the SASE area is being experienced. We're, we're at less than 1% adoption as of 2018. We're moving from less than one to 40 over the space of about five or six years. This is meteoric growth in a service area. We base this service upon the identity of the entity who is essentially asking for access, real-time context, what's going on around us in the operational environment, enterprise security and compliance policies that have to be enforced and applied, and a continuous assessment of the risk and trust interactions associated with those activities throughout the lifetime of that session or that connection. And we allow identities to be associated with people, with groups of people, think like branch offices where lots of people work, devices, application services, and even IoT systems and or edge computing locations. All the things and places we need, all the security we want and must have, all in one really cool, fun to say word, SASE is the name of it, and SASE is what you're gonna be looking to do as you secure your cloud edges. All right, everybody, so that's my top five security trend list for 2021. What's yours? Well, I got news for you, whether you want to tell me or not, I know a place you can go and check out more security training and find out about all the cool emerging trends that you're going to have to deal with in the coming months, days, weeks, and of course, years. That's IT Pro TV. You can come check us out for all your training needs, especially if you want security-related courses. You can come hang out and train with me and or all of the entertainers that I work with. We're always doing really cool, new, and innovative stuff and you can check us out at itpro.tv and or on our YouTube channel. I've been Adam Gordon, and I'll see you soon.